Good morning, Cornerstone. Um, about to share the inspirational vitamin. Uh, it's coming from week four of this book I've been going through. Um, Quest 52, 15 minutes a day, year long pursuit of Jesus. And uh, the text for today is from Luke chapter two, uh, verses one through 20, which is traditionally looked at as a Christmas passage, but it's very interesting to sort of um, look at it outside of Christmas and talk about, you know, what are some of the things that God is trying to communicate in this passage? Um, the question for this week is, does God play favorites? And I know that is a very interesting question. Um, it's something that almost rubs me the wrong way to think that, well, why did, why did Mark include this chapter? Is he, um, is his answer to this question going to be yes? Um, if it is, what do you mean by that? Um, you know, so anyway, I'm going to read this passage and just share one paragraph uh, from the from the reading, I think it'll be um, just a good uh, start to our week, a good inspirational vitamin. So over in Luke chapter two, um, starting verse one, it says, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them, they returned to heaven. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. And so, yeah, this idea, does God play favorites? Actually, Mark's answer to this question is yes. Um, um, and again, I'm not going to spoil the whole chapter for you. If you have the book, read it. If you don't, I'd say get it. It's a great book to go through this year. But um, yeah, he inevitably says that, you know, essentially, God does play favorites in the in the sense of there are people that he favors. There are people that he, um, you know, he doesn't interact the exact same way with every person. There are some people that get particular callings. There are some people that get, you know, particular blessings and others don't. And so um, it, it, it's not the sense of fairness like we think about in terms of, you know, our Western mindset. Um, but it is very interesting to sort of look at. There are times when God picks and chooses people to do particular things, whether that's Mary to bear Jesus. Um, the shepherds were given this message. Um, and so I'm gonna read this paragraph um, about, uh, you know, when he talked about, you know, the fact that these shepherds were really favored by God. It says, there's a lesson in this for us. The way our culture values people is contrary to God's metrics. Our culture values possessions. God values generosity. Our culture values youth and beauty. God values wisdom and fidelity. Our culture values entertainment. God values sacrifice. Often people who think the least of themselves are honored most by God. See Luke 18, 9 through 14. This explains why Jesus prioritized children, honored widows, and called fishermen. You may think you are nothing, while God thinks you are really something. The world may despise you, while the Lord esteems you. Perhaps you work the night shift like these shepherds. Perhaps you are not wealthy or respected. Perhaps you, know, you have no power, fame, or social status. You may have been bullied, neglected, or rejected, or you may have, or you may be a forgotten middle child. Well, congratulations. You may just be one of God's favorites. Um, what does this mean for you? Two things. First, the way for you to determine your real value is not through social media, median income, or an organizational chart. 
Without a clear view of God's value system, you may severely underestimate or overestimate the priority God places on you. Far too many of us walk around with a sense of self-worth shaped by elementary school politics or high school sports. If you are like me, you were not the first picked for kickball. Perhaps you lost the election for school council. You were never accused of being the teacher's pet or voted the most likely to succeed. Nonetheless, if you were the first to share with the less fortunate, you are a favorite of God. If you trusted Jesus in spite of broken trust with family or friends, God may have a particular preference for you. If you carry the stigma of a disability or injury, yet you shower love indiscriminately, God may give you priority. So anyway, I hope you are encouraged um, by this scripture and by this, this lesson today um, that, you know, um, when you may feel lowly or despised or not esteemed, God may, you know, have a special place, a special blessing, some special favor for you. So that's our inspirational vitamin for the day. Hope you have a great week, Cornerstone. We love you.